Chevrolet Camaro, 1982. The original Chevrolet Camaro looked great and packed some serious muscle if you bought the right edition. But over time things got watered down ever further, and by 1982 you could buy a Camaro with a 2.5-liter four-cylinder engine rated at just 92 bhp. That was just about enough to get the Shinky up to 100 miles per hour. The Mus MG8 Wing Cam, 1958, with its gorgeous lines and sweet handling, the MGA is a highly desirable classic. Most came with a 1.5 or 1.6-liter engine with overhead valves, but more than 2,000 got a twin cam engine developed from the standard MGA's B-Series unit. Fitted only to the MGA, this double overhead cam engine demanded top-grade fuel and the ignition timing to be spot on. Without both at all times, the pistons were easily hold, and with the propensity to burn oil, even when in route help, buyers avoided the MGA twin cam at all costs. Chrysler Gas Turbine, 1963 we're not mocking Chrysler by including this car that never reached full-scale production, after all, where would we be if car makers didn't push the boundaries? But the Chrysler gas turbine was an experiment too far. Just 50 were made and lent to families for real-world evaluation. They concluded that limited acceleration, shocking fuel consumption, a complicated starting procedure and poor refinement were too high a price to pay, and a regular V8 would do the job for Billman in 1963, the Imp had the makings of a truly great car, with its lightweight, slick gear change and zesty engine. But while the all-aluminium 875cc water-cooled form mounted in the rear, ensure the Imp was tremendous fun to drive genuinely good enough to take on the Mini, it was also this power plant that would be one of the imp's many failings. NSURO 80, 1967, of all the substandard power plants here, the RO80's Winkle unit was perhaps the most catastrophically weak, it was bad enough it nearly destroyed the company that made it. While the RO80 was a brilliant car with its ultra-aerodynamic design and semi-automatic transmission, total engine failures within the first 10,000 miles were common thanks to the rotor tips wearing, leading to a lack of compression. Austin 3 liter, 1967, we're stretching the great cars bit with this one admittedly, but you can't deny it that the Austin 3 liter is an intriguing car that could, should, have been great. Large and luxurious, the 3 liter should have featured decent right in handling but had neither, while its smooth straight 6 was based on the one seen in the Austin Healey 3000. Triumph Stag, 1970, an affordable four-seater convertible with V8 power, what's not to like? Especially when it's also got smart Michelotti styling. But that V8 was a 3.0-liter unit unique to the Stag, and it suffered from a litany of glitches including weak timing chains, warped cylinder heads and poor quality castings that led to a lack of coolant flow and consequent overheating. Jensen Healey, 1972, a two-seater sports car resulting from a collaboration between Jensen and Healey, powered by a Lotus engine. The world's first production car to feature an engine with four valves per cylinder, the Jensen Healey should have been sensational, but complying with US safety legislation spoiled the looks, and the twin-cam 16-valve engine turned out to be a complete disaster.